Data General is very proud to be here in uh, Singapore, the Raffles Convention Centre. What we're doing today is demonstrating some of the technology some that we are developing in some joint ventures and ourselves to uh, position ourselves as a major supplier to telecoms companies in the 1990s. On the stand, on, at the booth here now, we have four major technologies that we are exhibiting. I might say these are real products. There's no smoke and mirrors behind any of this. We have firstly our value-added services, which I will get to, uh, we'll go through each of these in a demonstration. But the first one of these points is our value-added data exchange. We also have some very exciting integrated voice and data applications. Uh, we have uh, some PC applications uh, showing our intelligent use of the network for gaining access to data. And last but not least, we have our very powerful open network management system. Okay, so I would like to now pass you across to Colin, who will demonstrate to you some of the value-added data exchanges. I'm ready to demonstrate now Data General's new comm server technology. The aim of this new technology is to deal with the problem that large companies have and that the PTTs have. Large companies often have a collection of different messaging services. They have these because of uh, internal political decisions and because of uh, takeovers. And it means that a large company may then consist of several disparate messaging functions. For example, they may have some IBM systems, some running DISOS or PROFs. They might have um, X400 based or accessible systems. Um, they might have Data General CEO, Dex All in One or HP. They will probably have a separate department which has access to the telex and fax lines. And it's very, very difficult typically to exchange messages between all of these different mail services. If you try and do the best you can using yesterday's technology, that probably amounts to having a series of individual gateways. For example, a gateway between CEO and DISOS, or a gateway between uh, X400 and PROFs. These work after a fashion, but the problem is that there is so much to be maintained in the way of individually tailored databases for each of these separate gateways that it becomes virtually impossible to use them in a flexible manner. The converse of this situation is when you're dealing with PTTs. The PTTs want to uh, provide publicly accessible office automation services. That's great, and typically they've used things like, tele like telemail and dialcom for these products. Unfortunately, what these services don't provide is that while they provide adequate service for lots of individual small users who have terminals or PCs, the big users, the big companies that these people may want to order products from or, or query, typically aren't accessible on them. They may or may not have their own little telemail or dialcom inboxes, and that then makes it not very satisfactory when it comes to interworking between these small offices and the larger ones. The aim of this product, ComServer, this technology rather, since it will be a product only in the near future, is for Data General to be able to provide a form of super gateway. This super gateway then allows all of these different messaging services to be connected to it. There is a single directory server and a very up-to-date directory server based on the latest X500 technology. And this then, with X400 internally, provides access to lots of different messaging services in as flexible a form as we can possibly arrange. So flexible a form that we'll be able to sell it to large companies in a tailored form or to the PTTs to tailor it to their special requirements. To demonstrate the power of ComServer, what we've provided on the stand here are terminals with access to a number of different messaging services. And these messaging services are live. We have real lines to profs, real lines to DISOS systems. We have a real CEO system and a real telex and fax over there. So we'll be demonstrating this power of ComServer by going through a little scenario which shows uh, a real life situation of people on different messaging services having to exchange messages with one another. In our scenario then, uh, a man in the field in a drilling site has got a problem. He's run out of drill bits and he needs to order more from the headquarters purchasing officer but he doesn't have much in the way of communications equipment. He has a telex line, however, and so now he's going to send a telex line 
off to the headquarters purchasing officer. And off it goes. Now he didn't have to think too hard about that. Fortunately, what he's sending to is a comm server telex gateway. When it arrives, the to and from fields will be investigated and looked up in the directory. That directory will point that telex towards the destination. That destination happens to be this equipment here, which is CEO system. Now, this doesn't look like a DG, DG screen because it's not. It's actually an Apple Mac running a DG terminal emulation program called Pacerlink. So shortly, the telex, when it's completed, will be forwarded through comm server, converted, and will become a CEO document. It will show up then by having the number of messages incremented here so that we have one more new message and the operator will be alerted with a, an audible beep. Here I am now then as the purchasing officer for the headquarters of the drilling company and as the purchasing officer I have received a new message in my inbox. I look at it and I see that it's a telex that's arrived. I read it and I find that it's a message from our man in the field, Sam Johnston, saying that he's run out of six drill bits, he needs them urgently, and can I please supply them? As the purchasing officer, my normal operation would be to fill in a purchasing order and send that off to one of the distributors with whom we work. So let's do that. In the future, Doing this operation will involve setting up an EDI, Electronic Document Interchange, document. For this demonstration, though, we're simply using CEO Wright, Data General's editor. The document looks like a purchase order, however, and it has the information that we want to send to the destination. We want to say it's an urgent order as well, and we want to say notify the, des the destination for the drill bits, that is Sam Johnston, urgently as soon as they're available. So here's our document ready to send off. Let's send it to the normal distributors with whom we work. They're a company called Island Supplies. So here's the message ready to send. We'll send it urgent. And off it goes. Now, I didn't have to think about that at all. But the reality is that Island Supplies isn't another CEO machine. It's actually another office automation system connected to our X400. For the purposes of this demonstration, that X400 is running a little application that will turn that message around and announce to us that unfortunately it can't supply. Here then is the message back from our first distributor. We look at it. Notice that it set us back from the X400 machine. And Island Supplies say that, unfortunately, they can't fill the order within 72 hours. Well, I guess we'll just have to use another distributor. So let's go and try another one. This time we'll try Singapore Pipeline Supplies. We'll mark it urgent again. And now it's off to Singapore Pipeline Supplies. Now, once again, I didn't have to think about that. I didn't have to say exactly what sort of machine it was going to and, and what form that the document had to be in. The purchase order I just expect to be converted automatically to an appropriate form for the destination. So Singapore Pipeline Supplies is actually a very small office which just has a few PCs. These PCs don't, all, don't run all the time in their messaging service. What they do is from time to time they access a messaging service on a larger machine. This concept and the product itself was developed jointly between Data General Singapore and the Singapore Telecom. Singapore Telecom will actually be providing a tailored version of comm server with this service as part of their POAS, Public Office Automation System, offering probably early in 1990. To look at the message that's arrived then, we have a two-stage operation here. What we have to do is use the PC's application to check with the remote messaging server and ask it to update our inbox. To do that, we select our in tray. And now we select the action.
which is update. What's happening now is that the PC is running a particular application called RUA and that application has requested the remote messaging server to give it information about everything that's sitting in its in-tray. That is the in-tray for this particular user. Having updated the in-tray then, we see that we have a new message. So we mark that to be read and then notify the messaging server that we want to read that message. The PC then has reached across and is now fetching, fetching the contents of an individual message. It's coming across on a LAN and it's arrived so that Singapore Pipeline Supplies has got the order from the drilling company saying that they have an urgent need for these drill bits. Indeed, it's so urgent that they'd like us to notify the uh, person who has the problem, Sam Johnson, if we know that we can supply. Well, we have to find out if we can supply. And so what we want to do is check with the warehouse and see if they've got it. So what we'll do is send a message. Oops. And this is a message to the warehouse asking them if they can provide the parts that we need. So now I've gone to the warehouse, the expediter for SG Supplies, and I note that there's some mail waiting on my prof screen because SG Supplies are running on a prof system. Now, let me explain again. This demonstration is running live, and so we're actually using a prof system courtesy of the Shell Company in, in Singapore. There's our message, so we'll go out and read it. We select our in tray, and here's the message number one. So we'll read it. Okay. It's a message from Singapore Pipeline Supplies saying that they have an urgent order and once again asking us to send a message straight to Sam Johnston if we can supply. Well, I'm the expediter, I check our files and I find we can supply. So I'll send a message back to them saying that we will supply it and I'll send a telex back to Sam Johnston. I select the reply option on profs and fill in the reply information and send it. So now I've sent a reply directly back from my prof screen to the RUA and its associated UAMS, the User Agent Messaging Service, the remote server that Singapore supplies use. So I didn't have to think about that in very hard, did I? I? All I had to do was say I wanted to reply and automatically it was sent back to the right destination. To send a telex then, back to Sam Johnston out in the field, all I have to do is send a note in profs. I select option one, and I can fill in the contents of the telex, and send it. That telex then, I've sent from a profs terminal back to a telex machine, and it'll come out on the telex machine we saw on the first shot. Let's go back then to Singapore Pipeline Supplies and make sure that they've seen our reply. We go across once again to our in-tray and say that we want to update it. The PC is reaching across to its messaging server, extracting the list of current messages and it should come back and tell us that we have a reply from SG Supplies. And there it is. So let's go and read it. Oops. Now the PC is reaching out to its messaging server and fetching the message from the host. Oh, and incidentally, the noise you hear in the background is the telex coming through back to Sam Johnston, telling him that the drill bits he ordered will be delivered. Here's our new message then, back from SG Supplies, saying that the price has been confirmed. So let's go ahead now and send a fax and a, and a message to the bank. And of course, we also have to tell the buyer back in their headquarters that we can fill their order. So let's do all three of those operations. We select send message 
and we'll tell the headquarters buyer that his order can be filled. We'll also attach to that a standard Multimate document which will tell him what the conditions are for the order. Now it's a Multimate document but it's going back to a CEO system. It doesn't matter. ComServer will worry about the translation from that document into an appropriate form for CEO. So that's a message back to the headquarters buyer. Now we can send the fax. And off that goes, sending from the RUA on the PC to its messaging server, converted by comm server, and out through a fax gateway to a fax machine just over there. Once that's gone, we'll send the message to the bank, to a DISOS system. To the United Overseas Bank from Singapore Pipeline Supplies, please play the supplier when they present their invoice. And off it goes to the bank. Let's go back to the CEO system and make sure that the headquarters buyer has seen our reply. Here it is in the inbox and an order acknowledgement. The order is going to be filled and couriered to site. So we're happy, Sam Johnson's happy. Let's make sure that the bank's happy. and we received a message here saying that it's okay to pay. Let's have a look at it. And there it is, a message from our RUA system saying that it's okay to pay on the presentation of an invoice from the supplier. Now notice this is a DISOS system. And as I said, this is a live demonstration. This is a DISOS connection on the Ministry of Finance in Singapore, who have courteously given us the access to their computers for the purposes of the demonstration. Real DISOS, real profs, real telex lines, everything working together. And last but not least, over here the fax is coming out. To provide the messaging transfer as ComServer does, a sophisticated directory server is required. To do that, we took the best one we could find, and that's the CCITT's X500 standard. We implemented that then, as best we could since it's still in the draft standard stage, and that provides the basis for ComServer. It'll also be found in other data general products to come. Why X500? Well, it provides the services we need. It provides us with the functions to be able to list and read and access and search the databases. It provides us with the ability to have a secure directory server. And we can make it highly available by replicating the directory databases over multiple machines. Furthermore, we've implemented it in such a way that customers have access to the database. They can have their own schemas, their own way of looking at the database, so that they can store information within the database that's particular to their special needs. Similarly, we provide programming access so that they can blend in these requirements and this special information with the functioning of ComServer. Well, we need the directory server for ComServer. What else do we need? We need billing and accounting information. Any viable public service must have very detailed accounting so that you can bill for every single function that's performed on the customer's behalf. Every single gateway transfer, every single uh, document conversion must be accounted for and we can keep details of the resources that are used, whether disk, memory, uh, the computer resources in general. Uh, maybe that particular service requires a premium price. And so we keep details of all this. This information on the contents of the file are available to the customer. How they choose to use this for billing is their choice, but for a commercially viable service, we have to keep this level of information in ComServer. The demonstration goes through showing all of the different components required for a, file, for a document transfer from the RUA across to a user, user on DISOS. It goes through the UAMS and X400 transfer, document conversion, onto DXA and DISOS, and then through to the user. All of these stages require their own resources, and these will be kept in the file and used for billing. All of that for that little document, document movement.
And that's it then for ComServer, a sophisticated messaging transfer service, a form of super gateway with everything needed to make it uh, commercially viable for PTTs or a sophisticated service for a large to medium sized company.